What are signs someone is a horrible person deep down? They use intimate vulnerable things you share with them against you. I'll tell you my sins so you can sharpen your knife. Second time I've seen that song mentioned tonight, and in totally different subreddits and different contexts. Weird. What was the other context? I see you've met my ex. It seems he also knows my father. Lack of accountability. It's always someone else's fault. Our childhood best friend is like this. You could watch him punch himself in the face and he'd blame someone else. It's honestly crazy the mental gymnastics he can do. He was never this bad but it's like adulthood just came too quick for him and he can't handle it. We're all in our 30s. Have a take on this. People who speak a lot about wanting honesty. Just be honest with me. Okay will do. Was honest. Got eye rolls. Harsh defensive talk. And gaslighting back. Why didn't you tell me sooner? Sounds like you were hiding things. No. This was the honest conversation and this was the appropriate time to have it. When someone talks a lot about wanting honesty, it seems there may be a reason that people are not honest with them and why they have an issue with it. Not sure. They usually like speaking truths and keeping it real but they so do not like hearing truth and cannot take truth well or graciously from others. They want to give it without question, not receive it. Now when someone brings up the honesty thing too much, it's a red flag. You've described my parents. It's not my fault that everyone else is bad at what they do. And besides, I only cast blame on others because it's how I was raised. It's my parents' fault. Stop harassing me. I had a best friend for 16 years that lived like that. Anytime she would get called out for doing poor things to others, she would blame her mom or that's what I was taught. There was always some excuse for her behavior. Never any true self-accountability. It got to the point where I couldn't do it anymore. Gave her the opportunity to mend the friendship by telling her how I felt. How her choices affected people, etc. And she blew it off. I wish her well. It's really sad. Only being nice to people who can be useful to them. In other words, they ignore Kant's categorical imperative. Paraphrased, treat others not just as means to an end but an end unto themselves. Thanks, Chidi. Chidi was my favorite character in The Good Place, but Janet came pretty close. You have to be very careful with that kind of person. I've seen some people make the mistake of going well they're awful, but they're nice to me since XYZ, so it's fine. No. It isn't. There is no telling when it will become more convenient for them to destroy you. And the second it does they will. It's amazing how people will use this with politicians. He's overtly racist, sexist, and homophobic. But I like his stance on free ice cream. How dare you be mad I did something horrible. My girlfriend in high school did this. She also later told me the reason she cheated on me was because I was too much of a bitch to put her in her place. Psychos. You are in your place, constantly between different man's legs, cause you a hoe. My STBXW, soon to be ex-wife, in a nutshell. She constantly makes shit up. If you try to point out horrible behavior, she'll literally start telling you that you did what she did. And I don't mean minor things. She once backed into my SUV and did about one dollar. Oh 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 in damage. She the says I was the one driving. Literally changes stories. Or she says XYZ in front of the kids and then emails me the next day and says she doesn't like it when I say XYZ in front of the kids. She's like the Russian government. She's constantly accusing other people of doing the things she's doing. It took me years to realize she could be this way. But once she started doing it I realized I could never live with someone so willing to twist reality just to cover her mistakes. She will step on your toes and turn around and say you stepped on hers. Horrible. She's a horrible person. Soon to be ex-wife? I love that acronym never seen it. Sorry you had to go through that. People can be awful. They are proud of their trashy behaviors. Everywhere is their personal trash can. Choosing beggar, attention seeker, thinks that everyone owes them everything, is only kind to others. When cameras are present, treats service employees as second-class people, turns people against other people. Everything is about something polarizing to them. That first sentence is the big one. You don't need to watch out for the absolute worst people. They'll brag about it. My brother brags about how greasy he is. He just got into a relationship with someone he says is as greasy as he is and he is proud of his kids when they do something he considers greasy. By that I mean things like steal, rip people off, get petty revenge on people etc. All around just being an asshole. I love my nieces, but if they take too much influence from him then they'll be just as trashy as he is. They are already doing shitty things to people. I'm sorry you have to call somebody like that your brother. Oh my god. I'm such a bitch abnormally prideful bitches. Fr my ex and her friends would say that about their own behavior all the time. Trust people if they tell you they are a shit person. Had this girl at my college say I was a bully in high school all proud and shit. It's disgusting. 
when they love making other people look bad, constantly calling people out, putting others down, disrespecting hospitality workers. Honestly one of the most important changes of my personality was when I realized, instead of saying something negative, I can say something positive. Like saying I like your haircut instead of something backhanded like I didn't expect that on you. It's such a common sense thing and seemingly minor but it makes a world of difference. I love that. To me, it takes a shit ton of more effort to be mean or rude somebody. Honestly it really is true in a lot of situations. What we were told growing up. If you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say anything. It still rings true. But I love that about you, how you bettered yourself. Yeah it's more exhausting for you and everyone around you but it ends up like a feedback loop. You're negative so people around you are. So you get mad at them and act like a dick. My older brother. Constantly talking shit about whatever friends are not present at the time. My friend does this and I wonder what she says about me when I'm not around lol. She probably talks trash about you. Two. There's no probably. Pointed this out to my parents shit talking. They just say it's the truth. Sometimes there are none. This, this is the answer. Most of the top comments at the time of my commenting are surface level behaviors. The people that are horrible deep down don't telegraph it. Charlie Manson was probably nice to dogs. Ted Kaczynski probably treated the wait staff well, etc. They generally have specific targets they abuse too, rather than abusing everyone they encounter. Real life isn't like the movies. Villains are not painfully obvious. A sad fact is, if you are nice and a people pleaser, you are more likely to be targeted. If you're someone who stands up for yourself, they are likely to move on quickly because you aren't going to take their abuse. True regarding targets. I had a boss that always had a whipping boy. You never knew who would be next. Once I became her target, it went so badly that the last five years had me on the verge of a nervous breakdown. I up and retired five years early with 23 years of service. Cost me a shitload of money and salary, retirement and social security benefits. But at least I'm sane. Knew someone four years just fine. Didn't know who they really were until we lived together for a few months. how they treat people who are below them. Absolutely. There's a guy in my team at work who treats agency staff like they're stupid. Such a two-faced cowardly narcissist who has no idea how bad it makes him, not them, look when he's blaming them for his mistakes. Those are the ones who never have friends. How you treat someone who is in the service industry really says a lot about a person. I'm on record telling the kids at my old office kid to work day event that the janitors literally hold the building together and without them the place would be a mess. One of the kids asked what's his job about the janitor with his cart and a high vis vest. He makes sure everything is clean. That the trash cans in our cubes are emptied every night. That the bathrooms have supplies like toilet paper and soap. You may not think about it that often. But if he wasn't doing his job you'd likely notice by the end of the day. And certainly by the end of the week this place would not be so nice to work in. Swear to god the guy looked like he was going to cry. All I was was a mid-level engineer with a group of germ factories following me around an office and a few labs. I learned something that day too. That those folks feel seriously underappreciated by the people they normally work for. What it must be like to think you're invisible to the people that very clearly rely on you doing your job. Maybe I was a little more aware of what that's like because I was in charge of keeping a lab up and running, calibrations, maintenance, etc. And if you're doing it right then everything just works and it's when you're fucking it up that people notice. I make a point to be polite and thank service people all the time. How they treat animals, dogs, cats, wildlife. I have been in the car with people who actively try to hit any animal they see crossing the street. That kind of shit. I have a guy I knew who didn't like a bat that kept landing on his porch so he tore its wings off and threw it in the road. I'm like bro your porch light is on and it's eating the insects attracted to it. That was your own free coexisting bug zapper. He also could have turned the porch light off. Dude went way too far and I obviously don't interact with him anymore. I sit in my backyard or the park and actively watch the bats go catching. And when I'm camping I love having them fly around and catch stuff attracted to the fire. I also heavily enjoy insects but I understand that nature and food webs contain themselves. A human though doesn't need for any reason to tear an animal up and leave it to die still alive cause they were annoyed. When I was a child my stepfather and I built bat boxes to put around our property to actually encourage them to nest. So I have a lot of respect for the nature around me. He sounds sick in the head and also dumb. Observe how they treat animals and people who can't defend themselves properly. Children as well. Who the fuck picks on children as an adult? That is something I will happily go to prison for. You'll go to prison to pick on children as an adult? Weird hill to die on. You don't understand. Those little shits deserve it. I don't bully them. Who will? S. Someone who isn't willing to change or grow. 
They don't take accountability and blame others. This is my ex, she would insist she had little to work on within herself if we wanted to stay together, but would laundry list her grievances against me, and while she did I tried so hard to just have a conversation and make sure it didn't turn into an argument while presenting my case for myself. But if I asked her to change a behavior or to not do something, she'd immediately go defensive and tell me I should be ashamed for wanting to dictate who she is as a person. Even when I said she was scaring me she said she doesn't need to change her emotions or how she expresses them. My ex would have these angry outbursts when he would start yelling and or hitting things around him. I tried to tell him that it scares me and he would just say that his temper is normal and that I was the one with the unusually low tolerance because I grew up in a mellow family. I accepted it at the time but looking back there was so much that was just not okay. This is kind of my mom. She isn't a bad person as such she does a lot for others. Frets over others not just herself. Tries to help people. But her over the years I've slowly realized she feels like deep down she knows everything. More than anyone else. And is incapable of accepting that she is wrong. Everything is black and white. If she thinks something it must be true. And if it turns out wrong it was true just. Some convoluted set of events somehow is making it seem not to be now. It was very difficult to grow up around. Because there were a lot of things I felt about myself when I was younger that were an extension of her refusal to believe she could be wrong about me. If she decided when I was two that I was bad at a particular thing, I must form my identity around being bad at that thing and never ever do it lest I be humiliated. But if I then did it and was good at it, it must be some fluke or weird situation. It was still a good thing that I'd spent my life thinking I was shit. There is other stuff recently where she has insisted something. I've been like no, that is not the case and I've been right, not because I always am just sometimes, and she gets really moody and passive-aggressive, even though I don't make a thing of it at all, and starts pushing these outlandish theories of how she was actually right to infer what she did. I have to be around her quite a lot at the moment, and this shit is just driving me up the wall, makes you doubt your own reality sanity. If they don't respect boundaries, and also generally how they act in conflicts with others, I've told this story a few times but it was the moment I came to the jet speed realization my ex GF was not a good person. She was living in a house with her sister and two younger brothers. She left with me to go to my house for a while and a brother asked if he could borrow her fancy Mac laptop. We were all extremely broke at the time, parents bought her the Mac, and it was when Wi-Fi was just becoming available and nobody would secure it. Brother would go sit on a bus bench and mooch off of someone's Wi-Fi signal since we couldn't afford it. She and I left and a few minutes later we get a call from sister saying something terrible has happened and we need to get back to the house ASAP. So we turn around and honestly, they were all kind of flaky so even I thought it was probably a molehill they were making into a mountain. But like 5 minutes later sister calls back asking how far away we are and bawling. At that point I started thinking it was probably serious. GF still thought it was gonna be BS. We turn the corner and there are several cops and an ambulance in front of her house. I still remember her saying this better not have anything to do with my Mac. As soon as I stop she jumps out and goes running in. I'm right behind her. I see her brother and he looks really bad. He's covered in blood, shaking and being examined by the ambulance. He has tire tracks on one thigh and leg. She runs in, runs directly up to him and says is my computer okay? DID something happened to my computer? He immediately just hangs his head in shame and while crying says I'm so sorry. I tried to fight them off. Turns out some dude saw him sitting there with the Mac. Asked for change for a $20 and when he said he didn't have it they grabbed the Mac and jumped in the car. He held onto the Mac and they dragged him with the car and when they finally kicked him in the head so much he let go he got his leg and thigh run over. GF starts yelling and punching him. Cops pull her away and tell me to get her out of there. They later told me they really should arrest her. I kinda wish they had, but they let it go. Nobody could believe the way she was acting. Everybody's jaw was on the ground. Like a switch I was like, oh, you're a shit person. Got it. Holy hell. He is okay now? How long ago was this? And what a shitty thing to say. F your Mac lady, your bro almost died. I am sorry to hear this. It was back around 2005. He was okay. Besides cuts and bruises. They caught the guys. I would have to fly back or give remote testimony every couple years after a while for the main one's parole. During an argument with a significant other, I mentioned respecting boundaries. The response I received what do you mean? Boundaries? After over 7 years, I had no words. People who talk shit behind everyone's back. Yep. Growing up my mom always told me if people are speaking poorly of others then you can guarantee that they are speaking poorly of you when you aren't around. That's what terrifies me the most in my work environment. They're always gossiping about other people and it makes me so uncomfortable and it terrifies me what they say about me. Relax. And enjoy the show. They don't change as a person because they claim that people have to accept them for who they are. Even if they are horrible human beings. 
If you can't handle me at my diddliest, you don't deserve me at my doodliest. Ned Flanders, probably, used to work with someone who had anger management issues. When they met someone new they would say words to the effect of sorry sometimes I fly off the handle. Please don't take it personally it's just the way I am. Invariably when they did fly off the handle they would get in trouble. But they just refused to deal with their underlying issue because as far as they were concerned that's just the way I am and felt it was everyone else's fault for not accepting that. They increased the price of remote raid passes. Had to check with sub I was in ha ha ha. You're right though. Next think you know they'll go around and kill third party apps. That first comment went over my head. But the second comment was gold. A big one is how they treat service people. Waiters delivery people, etc. Yeah I work with an anesthesiologist that is kind of a dick and PPL don't like him. They complain how mean he is to nurses. But I've seen him talk to other doctors and to the hospital management. I actually respect the fact that he talks to them the same way he does anyone below him. He's not a dick because he wants to belittle PPL beneath him. He's just naturally a dick to anyone. I hate it when people are nice to those above them but treat the people below them like crap. I agree that I'd rather people be consistently shitty. Yeah. I feel this, like if you're consistently a dick, I have a lot less of a problem with you, than if you're only a dick to the people who can't fight back. Diane's quote from Bojack is great that's the thing, I don't think I believe in deep down, I kinda think all you are is just the things that you do. This scares me more than the alternative, I think the right things and say the right things, but do I actually do anything? Alternatively, do you hurt people or negatively impact the world? Neutrality isn't the worst thing. The devil would disagree. This is the truth. People, even good people, who have dark impulse thoughts, like all humans, will often say that's not the real me though. But the truth is that it is. It's parts of you that are screaming to be integrated properly. What's really important is realizing if you don't learn to control them, they'll control you. Yep. Someone above mentioned remembering secrets told to you to use as a weapon. And I do that, but I've never acted on it. Maybe if they end up a toxic politician ruining populations worth of lives. But I like peace. They never own up to anything they did and manipulate others. I'm sorry if you felt upset by what I did. Are you gaslighting me? They blame everyone but themselves. Do mental somersaults to avoid acknowledging a mistake. Every interaction with them feels passive-aggressive to the point you wonder if they're just not capable of anything genuine. Had a friend like that. Another one is if they're mad at you but they never tell you why so instead just side at you and blow up if you ask why. They are willing to hurt others in any way for their own personal benefit. This is just being straight up a horrible person though. People who have a lot of crazy exes are a big red flag. Yep one of my ex-friends was like this. No, your long line of boyfriends were not all abusive jerks. They just wouldn't put up with your narcissistic I'm an empath personality or your endless stream of criticism. Condemnation and complaints with a side order of one-upmanship and insincere self-pity. Cutting her out of my life is one of the best decisions I ever made. How did you cut her out of your life? I'm thinking of doing the same with one of my friends who always makes me question my reality but struggle to do it. It was at the start of the pandemic, when people were going crazy with the panic buying. I'm in retail. So I was right on the front line trying and failing to keep a constant horde of customers from losing their shit in the aisles. I just finished helping her settle into her new rental, and emptying a whole room of my house of her stuff I'd been storing for her. She asked me what work was like. And when I told her she told me to get over myself because she'd had it worse. That was the last straw. My mental health in her presence was declining rapidly, which was in turn affecting my physical health, and she couldn't care less. The next day I said my goodbyes and cut all contact. Phone numbers, social media accounts, everything was deleted or blocked. And that was that. Never questioning if they're a bad person lol. Hans. Are we the baddies? They literally don't care about how they hurt someone. They don't care how. They don't care that they did hurt someone in the first place. Lack of empathy is the biggest red flag I can imagine. When they gaslight you or manipulate you into questioning your reality, and then you react, and it seems as though you're the bad guy. The mind games aren't funny, just a sanity fuck, and if you're going to fuck around, best believe you will find out. My ex used to say and do things that he knew would trigger me and then when I got upset. He would then get upset and say he felt hurt that I was upset and that I was attacking him and making him feel unloved. Honestly was the most toxic relationship. Made me question reality many times. 